Okay, I'm excited. Okay, can we go? We can. Yeah, go. Cool. Let's go. It's game number one on Secret Breaker between a favorite and Bonnie. Okay, here we are. Um, so yeah, this is Circuit Breaker. It's weird because our first series started on Blue Storm, a uh, very small map for two players. And this is a very big four player map, so it's gonna look a lot different. Uh, so in the bottom right hand corner in the red is Bonneth. Yeah, and in the top left corner, uh, other purple is favorite. So cross positions uh, in PvP. Mm. I think it should mean that if someone will decide to go with something more greedy, he will be able to escape with it. Mm. If he will be not too I, greedy. Uh, yeah, not too greedy. That's that's the, the crucial mistake. Because I know uh, there are specific players, I'm not going to name names, who when they when they play, they'll do an aggressive build and run it, uh, run it to cross positions first. Because they know that if that's where your opponent spawned and they're playing greedily, then you can catch them off guard with that. Um, but I, these are both very good players. I wouldn't expect anything kind of cheesy like that. I, I mean, Bonneth, I think, is ranked third on the BSL ladder. So, I mean, this guy is just gigantic. He's one of the monsters. Yeah, and he recently came back. I mean, not maybe maybe not recently, but he had a break like for, for half a year from Brood War. And now he's mm -hmm. he, he came back and he's now uh, one of the best players again. So that's, that shows how good of a player he is. And he's still getting better and better after this break. Yeah, I, I I hate players like that zero because they can come, they can be a good player, they can leave, and then they can come back. Um, I, it happens all the time in South Korea with players leaving to do their military service, and then they come back, and it's kind of rare that they uh, become a good player once again. But uh, <clears throat> guys like uh, like Moon, the famous Warcraft three player, yeah. left, did his military service, and just won the Warcraft three World Championship. Uh, and it happens sometimes in uh, in StarCraft uh, it, as well. So uh, really impressive to see that Bonnet. You know, sure, it's not two years to be gone for, but Brood War, man, you got to keep your skill up a lot. And uh, he has been able to get it all the way back and still uh, be one of the best players. Yeah, it's just like football. You have to practice all the time just to have your body be in shape to play on this on this high level, to be quick and to be to have very fast. Uh, like not reflex but 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 response to to anything what is happening and i i'm oh. expect i'm happy you bring this topic because i'm waiting for bisu to come back from military and become <laughs> best protos in the world again <laughs> actually so i just had dinner uh tonight uh with scan a uh, guy that is a very good oh. uh korean uh brood war player yeah. uh, and he is actually doing his military service right now so of course i asked him if he had seen Bil bisu in the military uh but unfortunately no they don't go to the same places so uh he has not uh but he is actually doing his military service right now and i'm happy to report that he is doing fantastically uh we went and got some sushi and uh ice cream it was it was amazing so um and is he able to pra practice over there in, in, in military uh so he's not able to practice while he is doing his military service but he has weekends off essentially because of the type of service that he's doing and so uh, he has to work during the week, but then he can practice and play on the weekends. And he still plays for his SDPL team, Seoul, uh, in a lot of their games. And I think he's won the last two matches that he played. So uh, he's still very good, still watches and cares a lot about the Brood War community and tries to keep up with it and play when he can. Oh, that's good. So that means that he have a plan to go back to... Oh, Bonnie sniped the probe, so it's fair skill probably. <laughs> <laughs> fair skill, good job. <laughs> Nice catch there. Uh, and yeah, it can be difficult to do that because probes are the hardest things to kill in the world. So good catch, Zero. Mm. And Favorite will go for the relatively fast expansion when Bonnie will decide to go for Robotics Facility. So we already have a s we already seeing differences in their builds and we know that Bonnie will be the one who will be trying to be aggressive this time. Yeah, uh, this is really cool because a lot, a lot of times you can just see PVPs look exactly the same the entire time, um, because there are just like very standard, you know, two gate uh, obs that you see that all the time. But this is going to be different because it feels like the hardest thing to do in a PVP is build an expansion because as soon as you do that, 
you really have to hold on because if your opponent is like three gating you, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah, you you definitely right and but maybe the, now the cross position cross position will help help favorite a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure, but but uh, his his posi position of his first dragoons is is really good, and he's like not letting Bonnie to see what is going on. And I'm not sure if Bonnie knows that that favorite went went for this fast expansion. Right, uh, Bonnet is doing a, a favorite is doing a really good job uh, controlling. Uh, the space outside to prevent it from being scouted, but you know Bonneth is still poking in here. He's trying to re he's starting to realize. Wait a second, you know if you're out here trying to stop me from getting information, what could you possibly be doing? And so he's building an observer uh, to go out there and check. Uh, but by then the Nexus is already going to be up, uh, and Favorite's already going to be mining from it. Yeah, and if he will be able to saturate three gateways for a longer time, he will have more dragoons than Bonnie. But he will go for the weaver uh, because because the robotic support bay is already there. So, but but because he made the observer, the weaver will be a little bit later, and and mm -hmm. it every every second is precious for favorite, and he he's probably happy. He he should be probably happy that Bonnie went for fast observer um, instead of fast weaver. Uh, yeah, that's a big delay. So that means that as soon as the observer uh, finds out what's going on, it's good to know what your opponent is doing, but it's bad to not be in, not be able to do anything about it. So the expansion from Bonneth is going to be a lot later, um, and I wonder if that is going to make him want to play more aggressively or maybe expand again. Maybe probably not. But uh, yeah, the observer will see this army moving out here. And realize that uh, Bonneth is way behind in economy. Yeah, he's way behind in economy, and he have a less number of dragoons. So overall, uh, his position is not the best. The only thing he have on on his side is the river, and and Bonnie is known for his extremely good river micro. So so oh, I'm yeah. really waiting to see what what he will bring, uh, when this river will bring to this game. Uh, yeah, so the he's going for double reaver, right? And this is a very defensive play. A lot of times you do this when you want to, uh, you know, play w with a a good economy. But he actually has a worse economy. So he, the reavers don't do anything by themselves uh, aggressively. They're only going to be here for defense. But favorite does have quite a few dragoons here, uh, and he's actually ferrying more across the map. But actually, no, he's going to turn those around and head back home, realizing that uh, he can't really push into a reaver uh, without things like a shuttle or another reaver of his own. So he pulls back home, and uh, he's just in a great spot. Yeah, it was weird for me that favorite wanted to be the one who is aggressive because his economy yeah. is so good and he had such a good position that I thought that Bonnie would be the one who will want to <laughs> deal some damage to him and. Now suddenly, favorite decided to maybe maybe he was just pretending that he's going for aggressive build, and now he's adding three more gateways, so six gateway against two. Wow, huge difference. Mm. Uh, yes, one of those numbers is bigger than the other. Uh, zero and favorite. Yeah, he's just killing it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't throw down a, a third base here pretty quickly, because I, he re he has a bigger army, more money, more bases. I I mean, what what do you He's not at any disadvantage, except for maybe a tech disadvantage. Like, he doesn't have all of that reaver tech going on, but uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to, to hold on against that with a ton of Dragoons. Yeah, you are definitely right. And, and so so Bonnie is having all the tech he can. It's it's like Robotics Facility Templar Archives already making <laughs> two, two Dark Templars, so it will be Dark Templar drop and the reaver probably. It's, it can be very oh. dangerous, but Observer from Favorite is not, now just... Like he's finishing building his first observer, mm -hmm. so he will have a tools to defend it. But will he be in position? This is the question. Yeah, uh, shuttle speed as well being researched right now. So uh, we are going to see some DT shenanigans or reaver drops or uh, whatever Bonneth has in store. But he does need to deal damage because his army is just a lot smaller. So he has to make up for that with this high tech, but that can be hard to do. But if there's one player that can do it, it's Bonneth because his reaver control is amazing yeah you are definitely right if i would watch anyone else game i would tell that favorite now is having such a big lead that it's hard to lose from this mm. position but <laughs> but but it's bonnie so i'm i'm wondering what this <laughs> this shuttle is can be better than than anyone else shuttle i think and yeah there but the, ops, the the pylon positions from favorite are genius that he he's mm -hmm. like seeing everything around his base so that's that's what he he needs to do and and he's doing yeah. that 
Oh, this is perfect uh, from Favorite. He's got scouting pylons that will show this shuttle coming in very, very quickly. And shuttle speed isn't done, so it's going to be a slow shuttle moving in. Uh, that being said, there is a perfect spot to drop your Reaver right behind here. But the, the Scarabs can only go one way, so... Oh, this is so close! He's got to get the shuttle out of there. And he does oh, save the yeah. shuttle. I thought he will get it because the, the Observer gave him vision. Bonnie very nicely sneaked the the shuttle um, and Pylon didn't see it, but Observer scouted it. And now Favorite is having Observer in the Bonnie main, so he is also aware how many gateways, how big of a production Bonnie is, is having. And Favorite sniped Bonnet's Observer, so he doesn't have any vision of what Favorite is doing on his side of the map. Uh, and that's going to deny him the uh, expansion timing because he won't know if his opponent's gone for a third base, just like he didn't know when he expanded to his natural. Mm. And I don't know how Bonnie did it, but he is now almost even in supplies, despite the fact <laughs> that, that that favorite was macroing from six gateways all the time. Like maybe he's having some probe advantage because I think in army still a favorite is having advantage. Yeah. I you know, you would think that if two players have the same number of gateways and one's ahead, he would always be ahead. But they're actually only about 10 supply uh, off of each other. And now it's double shuttle with triple reaver from Bonnet. Now, uh, there's a Korean player named Mini who tried this strategy in, I think, three or four different ASL games. And he lost every single one of them because it's so hard to control th uh, like three or four reavers in two shuttles. Um, but we're gonna see Bonneth try it. Yeah, and, and the main is undefended. All the units from Favorite are in the middle of the map, so he can deal such a critical damage to the to the Favorite economy that here we go. I'm afraid of, of our uh, German Protoss. Oh, here come the Reavers. They're dropping, but the probes are pulled just in the, uh, at the last second, but that's still a lot of damage being done, and in response, Favorite is not going back home to defend. He's pushing out across the map to fight Bonneth. Yeah, he wants to crash the crash the arm Bonnie of uh, uh, Bonnie army in the middle, but he's losing the main base. So, so it's really interesting choice out of out of favorite, and he's definitely having an army advantage. So maybe it will work for him. Oh, here's all the probes. He's gonna kill every single probe here. Oh my god, every single probe is gonna die here. Uh, if my vocal cords don't die first, uh, but I think what Bon what favorite realized is that reavers kill buildings really slowly. Oh my god. Let's look at every the supplies. Dying. Yeah, now he's like he's dropped 30 supplies because he lost every probe he had. So <laughs> that's terrible for favorite. And if he will lose the Nexus, he will not have money to rebuild it. So this is what but he I, needs to win with. I, I think it's time. Okay, so Bonnet did critical damage. Just pick up the Reavers and come back home. You need those Reavers back home to defend because his, your opponent has zero economy. So just, just come back home. Just bring the Reavers back, because this is a gigantic army. You can't look at the supply to tell out who's ahead here, because there's so many probes that are dead. And Favorite has a gigantic army here with Storm. Yeah, with Storm. The Storm might be very crucial, because there is one Reaver on the high ground. He's trying to snipe the Reaver, but... Oh, Bonnie is microing that so well that he killed six Diagoons and, and <laughs> without, with any loss. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> oh my god. So, so Bonneth is doing a great job. Now, the Storm is doing okay, but I think he's out of Storm right now. Uh, does he have one more? No, he's out of Storm. So yeah. this is not going to look good for Favorite. Uh, like, he's he's going to have to fight up high ground, up a ramp. He's lost his high temp uh, He's lost one of his high Templar. And he has nothing to go back to back home. Yeah, there is only one probe from Favorite. So all the limit we are seeing, it's army. And, and Bonnie is very nicely, very smartly using the high ground advantage and he will defend it mostly, like, oh, most there's, likely. There's DTs here too and no observer. I don't think there's an observer. Uh, but even if there is, this is going to be too good of a defense. Favorite had such a good start to this game. So many advantages, but Bonnie is just too good. Yeah, he's, he's just too good. And for the most game, I thought that Favorite will get it. And then this double, shot, double, double speed shuttle drop happened and, and we saw uh come back from 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 mr bonnie so this is this was impressive yeah i that's the perfect word for it uh as soon as uh as as soon as bonneth dropped those three reavers in the back of favorite space i'm just like well this really decides the game if there were maybe dragoons left back in the back of his base to defend against that uh then maybe he like snipes the shuttle and all of a sudden the game turns around because he pushes across the map and wins but uh, still, really excellent attack and then defense. Um, I don't know, Bonneth is just, he's just the whole package.
Yeah, definitely. Playing, like, it's the hardest part in Blood Bowl to play the game when you are behind and to play the game, like, to know what to do when you are behind because it's easy to play when you have advantage because then you can, like, make some mistake and it will be forgiven. But when you are behind, like, you can't make any mistake after that. Yeah. Uh, to, to Bonnet's credit, when he was behind an expansion for a while, um, and he could have been behind two. Ex uh, he could have been behind a third base too. Favorite actually could have expanded uh, pretty early, way earlier than he he did. So, um, if the game hadn't been decided there, and Favorite had gotten a third base really quickly, then it could have been even harder for uh, for Bonnet. But yeah. he used shuttle speed and those trademark reavers to do so much damage. Uh, yeah, yeah, and really, in, the, really well played. in the perfect timing when the army of favorite was in the middle of the map. So he yeah. felt the timing of that very nicely. Mm, okay, so game number two will be on... Um, game number one will... Be, number two will be on in the name of an Eddie, a new ladder map. And, and overall new map, I think. Yeah, so this is a new map for the new KSL season. I like that every season we're trying to bring in at least one new map. And I don't know if you remember, uh, I think Icy Cup had this cool thing called Map of the Week, right? And yeah. you get like bonus points for playing on it. That was really, really cool. Um, and so this is sort of the pro gamer version uh, of, of Map of the Week. It's like new map of the tournament, right? So things yeah, like that's... Silted, things like Roadkill, things like In the Way of an Eddie. Yeah, that's well described. And... Yeah, and, and uh, we can see that a lot of players are choosing this map, they are liking it. It's it's pretty balanced map, there are so many mining bases and there are islands over there, so, so the games there are are uh, more interesting than, than than in a regular map. So, yeah. so I'm very interesting what we'll see over here. Are you ready, Mr. Rapid? I am. Okay, so we can go game number two, Bonnie versus uh, Favorite. So spawning on the top right position uh, as a purple Protoss is a uh, our, our player who is leading 1-0 Boney. That's right. And his opponent in the bottom left-hand corner in the green uh, from Germany is Favorite. Uh, or at least that's the flag by his name. Uh, so very impressed by Favorite's ability to uh, get that economic advantage early on. They're at cross positions on another very big map, uh, so he could absolutely go for that early expansion uh, once again. Um, I would say that, you know, my favorite way to watch Bonneth play is just like a super fast speed shuttle with Reaver, uh, just really going, uh, not all in on that, but it's really impressive to watch. Uh, because last last game, Bonneth was really slow uh, yeah. on building a shuttle at all. It went OBS first and really couldn't do anything to punish uh, favorites early expo. Yeah, he did. Like he didn't do anything, and I I don't know if he could do and because after making this observer, like I think favorite did excellent job with keeping the with the dragoons uh, Bonnie out of scouting, and Bonnie was forced to make fast observer, and then after after seeing that the expansion is already up, he couldn't do too much. So so I think like mm -hmm. this was very good game out of favorite, and and now Bonnie is is probably much more focused on this game after after the, after the first match. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, but this is in the way of an Eddie. It's pretty weird. Um, it has, uh, you know, those island uh, expansions that are, you know, I don't see them taken a whole lot, but uh, they are kind of interesting in the way that they uh, that they play uh, in there. And we've got crashed battle cruisers, which are apparently called the NORAD 2. I've never noticed that they had a name. But uh, they you, do. I think you are right. I think you are right. We can see the map even to to, to confirm it. Uh, I remember I, I looked that up and I'm just like, okay, well, I don't know what the NORAD to. If there's if that has a lore meaning, then I I do not know it. But uh, uh, they're there. It's it's really cool to see so many kind of not new mechanics, but just kind of interesting mechanics come back. I hope we see more like cloaked lurker eggs and like random stack buildings <laughs> and stuff. I really like those, but it's really confusing for new players to watch. Because it's just like, well, what is that thing? Uh, but uh, everything has a purpose, and I'm like, I like to see creative map makers who can make use of a lot of those cool features. 
Yeah, something which blowed my mind was the sparkle where, where it's only Zerg could mine from this, this ferd gas and Terra and Protoss did didn't. How did they do it? Yo, I don't know, I but no it was idea. so weird. It was so fun even, like, I loved this map, even as a Zerg on islands. It was, it was, it was such an interesting map and, and yeah, the, the, the imagination of a creator of this map is, is, he could probably write, like, something similar to Game of Thrones or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, really creative. Uh, I uh, really love stuff like that. Um, so I, I hope that we get a chance to see new ma new things in the in the uh, future. I was actually talking to uh, the guy who made the Brood War map editor, not the not the one that comes with. Oh my oh. God, Bonnets just killed a probe. What? That's he's not so good. To <laughs> yeah, he scouted he scouted everything and killed the probe. So that that's really good for him. The probe was working overtime. Now, unfortunately, the probe also died. So you might say, well, that's one for one. It's like, no, 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 no. You're not supposed to be able to, to, to do that. Um, because like you said, he does get that scouting information. He knows that it's only one base right now. So there's nothing like a crazy early expo or anything like that. Uh, but will he see uh, the third? Did he see the third gateway being built? I don't think so. Yeah, I think he saw only two gateways and look at that, Favorite is skipping the range for the Dragoons, so so Bonnie is already having his halfway done and he, if not even Bonnie will notice that, I'm sure he have a skill, good, huge enough skill to, to abuse that and to out micro uh, goons without mm -hmm. range. Oh, now, now he, Favorite is just starting his range, so he will be much later than, than, than Bonnie's one. Right, so he wanted to go later range because he is going three gate here. Now, obviously, if there is at any point a dark sh uh, or a, a dark templar being built by Bonneth, favorite would kind of lose the game at that point. But uh, you know, it's gonna—I don't think Bonneth plays that style, and he did go for two gateways instead of just just one rushing for anything. So it's uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how favorite wants to play this because last game. He played uh, very economically, getting that early expansion. This time, he's going three gates, so we're going to see a lot of Dragoons. And if Bonneth tries to fight out on the map and doesn't realize he's behind in Dragoon numbers until it's too late, that could just be the end of the game. Yeah, you are definitely you are definitely right, and and I think I like this uh, choice from Favorite because this is reverse uh, ramp uh, uh, main base. So if he will be able to be on top of the natural, he will be able to close Bonnie. But now he is losing two dragoons for free. Uh yeah, it, ugh. losing dragoons in PvP, it's it's almost like losing Lings in ZvZ in that like if you just have one less, you just lose. Yeah, so, that's, that's exactly uh, good comparison. Good, com good comparison. Okay, so here are the Dragoons. They pop out just in time to fight, but he huh. still has less. And the Zealot is getting melee shots off, which should <laughs> kind of never happen. So this is... Oh, man, this is just terrible. How does the guy with more gateways lose? Uh, what? Bonnie is, Bonnie is showing us that double gateway is better than triple gateways in terms of <laughs> Dragoons versus Dragoons because, like, like, he killed seven Dragoons with losing one <laughs> for God range. Oh, that's... That's probably why he, he was able to win, but that was impressive it's, win. 